She's got skills, boys. They're multiplying. Wow. She had definitely has some good talents. Let's talk about that. She got talent. Yeah, yeah. So she likes to help other people. She's got talent. So, Proverbs chapter 31, 19 through 20. We're doing two scriptures today. Uh, oh, by the way, <clears throat> I probably won't be on for a couple days because we're going on vacation. Uh, and then I'll be back with Five Minutes of Frankie. But right now, you are tuned into Five Minutes of Frankie. Talking about um, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 through the end of the chapter. This can go talk about uh, prophecy about the church coming up, or it could talk about actual women who did these things that were honorable in their household and in their place of living. So some of these words we don't use any. Well, I guess if you're in certain circles, you would use these words. But if you were in like, you know, spindle class or, spindle you know, class. You're, you're spinning out clothing from fibers. Fiber friends. Right, but they don't. I don't think they spin, do they? They might spin. No, but Carmen does. Oh, there you go. She Carmen has a thing does. That spins something. So this this thing called di the distaff. The distaff is uh, a tool that holds the unspun fibers. Okay. So when we put that in this context, um, in Proverbs thirty one nineteen through twenty, you understand it. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. So she's, she's pretty much spinning out wool to make clothing um, to help her family and to help others. I'm not doing that, just saying. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't know how to do that. Uh, she opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. So not only does she take care of her own family, but uh, she should be she should and she does, just through the kindness of her heart, helps other people. And that's a, that's a big deal because I think... Um, Again, if we think of others first, like God tells us to, our problems become less. And our problems um, seem less burdensome when we're helping others. Like we're distracted. The holy distraction is serving others. I mean, really. Because if you sit there and you're not serving others or you're not serving God, if you just sit there, you're going to start thinking about yourself. You're going to start thinking about your problems. You're going to go down this spiral. You're going to go down this hill. And you're not, many people don't come back from it. And they're depressed all the time. And they're just angry. And they're bitter. But you know what the cure for that is? It's the total opposite. It's joy and serving others. Like people say, well, I, I just, I got to stay in the house and I can't be around people. But the best cure for that is to be around people. Um, well, I feel sad. Well, what's the best cure? Be around people. A lot of times we we start thinking of ourselves. Now, I'm not saying you can't. I'm just saying if if we more concerned about God and about others, then a lot of times we don't focus on all the negative or all the all of our selfish desires, which I think is sometimes better because if I think of your needs and you think of my needs. All of our needs are met. And then nobody has to sit there and spiraling in, in despair or, or they can't get out of these things. And so people are shocked when, when Katie and I help them or, you know, we want to help them no matter what they did to us. And they're like, why would you do that? Because we're focusing on God and other people more than ourselves. And it just works. It, it, for some odd reason, because God is the God of the universe and he tells us to do this, it actually works. Um, so, uh, here's this lady, you know, making good on the things that she's making in her house, not only so much for her family, but in abundance, in, in sacrificial giving, she is helping others. And so it, it's an amazing, uh, way to live. Now, if she was in our culture, she'll probably be like, uh, she just buys this stuff and then she keeps it in her closet and it rots because she's never opened it. It still has the tags on it, but she's not giving it away to anybody. 
I, I know a lot of people like that. Their closets are full, but their heart is empty. And so no matter what stuff you have, God has given you responsibility over that to take care of it, to help others. And that that's just the short and long end of it, that we should be thinking of others first. And when they think of us first, then everybody's needs are met. And then we don't have to have people without houses or people without food or people without clothes. So I think this is reflecting the church. The church should be standing there saying, hey, we'll, we'll have spiritual clothes for our members, but no, we're not, we're not giving that out to anybody else. No, 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 no. God says, <laughs> don't hoard it in. You need to <clears throat> start sharing the gospel, start sharing with Jesus, start sharing uh, the clothes of the kingdom. Um, and how do we do that? We start with the physical. We get permission to actually talk about God. And so we, we feed them, we clothe them, we house them, we go to them. Not them come to us, we go to them and then hang out with them and actually show the love of Christ. So my encouragement for today is how are you showing the love of Christ? Are you sitting at your spindle and keeping it all to yourself? Or are you sitting at your spindle and saying, oh, I can help others with what I have? I love you. Jesus loved you too. You have a great Thursday, and I'll see you maybe like Tuesday or Wednesday of next week. You're going to do it tomorrow? Nah. I'm going to pack up stuff for oh. our vacation and stuff. So. Okay. But uh, still come Sunday morning at uh, 11 o'clock only. Um, and if you want to hear the sermon or anything, it's on Facebook Live. Um, and uh, I'll see you next week. Love you. Bye. Appreciate it. It looks nice. Thanks. This was long. Yeah. It's good though.